So in this video, we're going to talk about nitrogen uh, triiodide. And is this molecule polar or not? Well, we first got to draw the Lewis structure. So if we look at um, the molecule, we have uh, three nitrogen atoms and three iodine atoms. I'm sorry, one nitrogen atom and three iodine atoms. Well, we know from the periodic table uh, that nitrogen carries uh, five valence electrons. And we know that from the periodic table, iodine carries seven valence electrons. So to get the total number of electrons in this case, I could simply take three times seven because we have three iodine atoms. So in that case, that would be uh, 21 uh, plus five. So that would be a total of uh, 26 electrons that we have to place. So again, usually in our molecular formula, that central atom in this case will be on um, the atom that's furthest to the left. And so we should be in good business. So at this point, I could place uh, three iodine atoms around my nitrogen, I could just form single bonds at this point. So how many electrons we've used this for? Well, we have two, four, six um, electrons. Remember, nitrogen is one of those molecules, um, atom rather, that uh, typically satisfy the octet rule. So we must sat satisfy um, the octet rule in this case for nitrogen. So since we have uh, two, um, six uh, electrons around nitrogen completely, um, I could form a double, uh, a lone pair on the nitrogen atom, and this will fill, fulfill the octet, right? So we have two, four, six, eight electrons around the nitrogen now because remember each single bond counts as two electrons. So therefore, we can only we, we can't really do anything else with the nitrogen, and we've used the eight out of the total twenty six electrons we had to place, right? So we still have eighteen more uh, to place, right? So therefore, because nitrogen octet is full, we can't really do any other thing else. Uh, with nitrogen, so the only other option we have is to just put the electrons on the iodine atoms. And so in this case, each iodine atoms, each iodine atom have uh, only two valence electrons around it. So if I put three pairs of lone pairs in each, then you can see that the octets uh, are now full. All right. So now we have a total of eight electrons on um, each around the iodine atom atoms and so iodine's octet is full and so if we count the total number of electrons we've thus uh, we've used thus far we have uh uh we have three times eight which would be 24 plus the two lone pairs on the nitrogen so that would be 26 so uh we know that our lower structure is correct at this point now if we start drawing our dipole structures um we know that iodine is more electronegative uh, than nitrogen and so um, we can start drawing, I'm sorry for these males, but we can start drawing our dipole structures. Now, one thing I'd mention uh, in this case is that be careful, this molecule, because of the lone pair, the bonds are actually bended, they're actually they're actually closer together, so they cause repulsion because you have pretty much two negative, it's essentially two negative charges are close to each other. And so you have repulsion, and so really, the molecule looks something like this. If I redraw my uh, nitrogen atom, then what we really have is something like this. Right? Because of the lone pair on the central atom and there are two negative charges, it actually pulls it actually pulls the bond angles um, closer to each other. So it pulls the bond angles closer to each other. And so this is really the molecular structure of the molecule we call the trigonal or pyramidal or shape. Now, you could still get the correct answer using this formula, and I'm going to show you, it doesn't matter in this case, um, but it's just to, to show you that this is actually the true structure of the molecule. And so if we draw our dipole moments, we know that iodine is more electronegative than nitrogen, and so iodine should be hogging the electrons, so that's why the arrow is pointing to the iodine. And you should see that now you could actually see dipole moments in the molecule. Now remember that if we have a dipole moment going like this and we have a dipole moment going like this, then the net or the addition of this is actually straight down the middle. And so we could assume that for 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 our molecule as well. So the net dipole moment will be going down the middle for the addition of these two. Right? And so essentially we do have a net dipole moment in the molecule. And so that's why nitrogen iodine is actually a polar molecule. Right? Um, you could also do it using it this way, like I said before. You didn't have to really uh, get the molecular structure completely correct in terms of the, the, the geometry, but you'd actually see that if you um, 
if you do it this if you do it this way, then you're still gonna end up with the same result. I just wanted to show you the correct molecular structure, but uh, if you use, if you do it this way, then essentially you're gonna have a dipole moment going like this, and you do have a dipole moment moment going like this. But remember, you also have a dipole moment going down, and so you can assume that these two cancel out, and so you you will still have the net dipole moment, which would be right here. Now these two canceling out is not really true because we said that's not really the shape of the molecule and so drawing it this way in terms of the actual geometry uh gives you the appreciate appreciation that none of the dipole moments really cancels um each other out in this case